Hello humans, Batsy here with a new episode of the Early Game Farms, this time we are going to have a look at a Steam Engine. For anyone new to the series, Early Game Farms features guides and schematics for farms and other builds, designed to maximize accessibility in the early stages of a Minecraft world. Do keep in mind that the rates and cost of the builds are based on my priorities, and what I deem appropriate for the stage I'm trying to target. You might have completely different needs, and I encourage to tweak the farms accordingly. Today we going to have a look at a pretty cheap and easy to set up steam engine. You can see the list of materials on screen right now, and later on the video I will be teaching you all how to scale it up in case you need more power. This base design will be producing a total of 16,384 stress units. And it will achieve that without using any fuel, or having to go to the nether for it. The reason to make this video is really simple. I try to make most farms to be standalone whenever that's possible, which means that they also come with their own engines. The problem is that sometimes a lot of power gets wasted, or it requires the farm to be unnecessarily big, especially when a small farm uses actors at high speeds. To fix that, I'm going to share this very cheap and simple engine which we will be able to use for several farms at the same time, making it more efficient and convenient to set up. And of course I will reference to this guide whenever I make a farm that doesn't come with their own engine, which I think it will be a better learning experience. As for the engine goes, there are a few steps we need to take a look in order to produce stress units with steam. The first one of them being the size. The minimum size to produce any power is with a tank of 4 blocks. That can be a 1x4 boiler, or a 2x2. The second step we need is the heat, which in our case is going to be a campfire providing the minimum amount of heat possible to produce steam. And of course, there won't be any steam unless we add water into the boiler. And that's why we're going to use a pump on an infinite water source, at the exact speed of 20. That's the minimum speed required to reach 10 millibuckets per tick, which is all we need for a tier 1 steam engine, producing a total of 2048 stress units. With that concept in mind, we're going to be building this steam engine. With a total of 8 passive tier 1 engines, that produces 16,384 stress units. The first step is to power up the pumps, which they will be running at 32 RPM. For that, we're going to use 4 different small water wheels, producing a grand total of 1,024 stress units, which is the exact amount we need to power the 8 pumps. And to reach the 32 RPM, we're going to use cogwheels to speed it up twice, from the base speed of 8 of the water wheels. It is hard to see what the cogwheels are doing because I squeezed them all as much as possible inside the engines, but with some clever placements, it ended up being incredibly compact. And with the water right by the pumps, and the campfires to provide the passive heat. We have everything in place to produce some power. Normally I show the steps more carefully in case someone wants to build it on their own, instead of using the schematic. This time around, the placement of the cogwheels is so tricky. I much prefer if you all just use the schematic instead. Especially because a couple cogwheels require a specific placement order so they can be glitched into place. I'm going to call this one, Batsy, Passive, Engine. Once you grab the schematic, and print it in place. We want to set up the engine, and fix a couple of bugs. First, we want to replace all the top tanks which they always get placed glitched out. Replace as many as you need to, until you see the boiler status for the engine. Then make sure that all the engines have their shaft, which should look exactly like this. Otherwise, just simply place the shaft yourself. To finish it off, we need to fill up the water, which it has a couple of tricky placements. First, you can see this trapdoor between the pumps. Open it, and waterlog the big cogwheel underneath, which should already start moving the pumps and cogwheels. Do make sure to close the trapdoor afterwards. Then, we want to waterlog every single one of those eight pumps. And that's it, that should get your engine working. Make sure you followed all of the steps, and feel free to join my Discord if you have any problems with it, or have any other questions. I'm always happy to help when I can. There are a series of chains to connect both sides of the engine, in order to use all the power from it. 
You should connect it on this gearbox in the middle, unless you only want to take the power from one of the sides. If we wanted to scale things up, it's as simple as pasting one schematic after the other, for as many as we want them to be. Then we want to go to the middle, and the rows where there are random trapdoors, we want to remove those, and put back the pumps that should be in that place, making sure that they are facing the right direction. Then we simply need to follow the same steps as before to fix the tanks and place the water. It's really simple to scale up, and it does produce a decent amount of power for how cheap this thing is. I hope the schematic proves to be useful, and like I said before, everyone is welcome to join my Discord in case you need help or even just to chat. I'm currently sick, hence why I made a shorter video, but I will be releasing a new farm that produces sweet rolls. I've been asked a few times to make a farm that produces bread, and I thought I could go a step further and make sweet rolls instead. I would love to hear what other farms you all would like to see, it helps me a lot in order to understand what needs people have early on. Thank you so much if you made it this far into the video, take care everyone, and I will see you all next time. Bye!